Hello, beautiful souls. I am so excited. We have an amazing guest today, um, Penny, and she is channeling a beautiful Ascended Master. And I am Stacy Overman, a spiritual guide and co-creator in Positive Change. Just so proud of Penny. She is one of my enrolled students in my nine-week program called Spiritual Awakening for the New You. And she is like just a little over halfway through the program and has already met an ascended master that helps her. And so we actually asked permission from not only Penny, but from the ascended master, if we could do an interview, a channeled interview through Penny with him to ask some questions that the world may want to know. And so Penny, introduce yourself tell us just a smidgen about you what you want us to know and who your ascended master is that you're working with well I'm Penny um and I pretty much I mean some people already know this but I pretty much have been psychic my whole life um since I was a child you know it became clear that you know that I had abilities and you know throughout my life I would use them kind of tone them down depending on, you know, like how, who I was around, you know, because I was kind of scared, you know, always to put myself out there in this world, you know, and let those, you know, sensitive psychic colors fly. And, you know, and finally I got to a point, you know, not even that long ago where I'm just like, no, I'm denying who I am, you know, and I really felt strongly that there was something inside me needing to be let out. Um, and that there was so much more to who I was that I was like, doing you know there's so much more and I kept thinking you know I was like I just I know there's something important about what I'm supposed to do and I'm not doing it um and I think now I've come to realize that one of my purposes is is that I'm a channel um and you know the world is ascending and my master right now um I've had many not just in this lifetime but in past lifetimes but Zora was new to me um probably within the last I tried to ask him like eight to ten years um, he's been kind of waiting for me to reach the vibration where um, he and I would connect because where you're at karmically, vibrationally will affect who your master is um, at that time. Um, so I met Zaro, which he could also call him Zaru. His, I mean, he goes by different names and, you know, on the other side, names aren't as important. So I would say to people who don't, you know, know their guides' names or if they're working with a master, names really truly aren't that important. But I was lucky enough to get a name, so... Um, he's also a Zoroaster, or you can call him Zaruthraster. Um, he doesn't care if he's called Zoro or Zaru. I call him Zoro because for some reason that just seems more natural to me and how I first heard of him. Um, and he's from the time from before Jesus. He's from probably, when I've asked him to give me a roundabout number about where he's from when he was alive, it was probably about five, 600 BC. Wow. So, wow. I mean, he walked, you know, the world a long time ago, um, and was a, a very influential, like one of the first like religious influential teachers most of our time in humanity. And um, yeah, I mean, he's just, a, he's a beautiful soul. I mean, he's more evolved than he was when he was living, of course. Um, and it's just, you know, I think my purpose is like all the masters are different. Um, some have some same purpose, but others don't. But I think his main thing for us is that the world is ascending and he's all about love and ascension. I mean, that's his main purpose for me is to help get the word out, you know, about love and ascension. And that's what he's using me for, you know. And so a lot of his things, you'll hear that a lot. Probably today, love is going to be the answer to a lot of questions. So That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I think this is a little history on Zorro. <laughs> I love it. And so I want to say hello, Zorro. Thank you for being here with us. I'm so excited to <laughs> He's nodding. Yay, <laughs> meet you and learn from you. And honored, just absolutely honored is the word. And I almost feel like I need to bow or something. It's just like I'm so honored. It's just Aww. amazing. Um, Penny, like one real quick thing for someone that may think that they're channeling or getting like an ascended master or an angel mm -hmm. or something. What was it that clicked for you that you just knew you were channeling some amazing being? For me, it's when I remember walking downstairs, it just all of a sudden, I had a feeling of just like a stirring inside at first, like just, 
I started to feel better, lighter, calmer. Mm -hmm. um, things that used to upset me didn't upset me as quickly. And all of a sudden, I just remember I was in the kitchen doing something, and I reached for something, and I wasn't thinking out loud. In my head, you know, some of you have your own internal dialogue, like, oh, I'm going to have coffee um, or something. You know, all of a sudden, you know, I wasn't thinking about anything at all. And all of a sudden, I heard a man's voice in my head, you know, and I'm a female. So, you know, of course, I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, and I remember looking around. It was so incredibly felt like it was in the room with me that I remember whipping around because, you know, it was not my boyfriend's voice either. It was a much, it was a deeper, calmer, slower speech with a bit of an accent. And I remember just whipping around and looking and being like, oh, my goodness, you know, like, where is that coming from? You know, and right away, you know, he's, you know, assured me to not be afraid, you know, that he was a teacher. He explained who he was. And I was just, I remember just like having to go sit down. I had to go get sit on a chair right away because I was just like, wow, because the signs were there. I saw three, three, threes, or just, you know, triple digit threes all the time. Okay. Everywhere I looked, on TV, just for some reason, they always came up. And which is an assign of ascended masters. I kept thinking, I was like, well, that's cool. I'm sure someday, maybe years down the line, you know, when I'm, you know, I'm thinking going to be like an even stronger psychic or something, you know, like I'll meet a master, you know. And then sure enough, I mean, he's like, no, you know, he's like, you're ready now. And he's like, and we need you now. And I was like, wow. And I just remember being like, at first, you know, honored at the same time, also a little like anxious because I was like, I am I ready? And he was just like, you think we wouldn't know if you were ready. <laughs> and I was like, true. <laughs> you know, like, how, why would you do it? He's like, why would you devout, you know, I mean, doubt the divine. He's like, it's on our time, not yours. And I was just like, he didn't mean that in a mean way, but it's just human our, the human timeline is so skewed, you know, that we think everything's about us. And in our time, something has to happen. Like we want miracles to happen when we want them to. But that's not really how the other side works. You know, they're watching everything we do and they know when we're ready. You know, and when you're ready, you know, a master will definitely show up. You know, if you let them in and you want to work and if there's a message they need to get out, um, they'll work with you. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I love that you said he was mm -hmm. of love and light and kind and it told you what he was, who he was, what he was mm -hmm. coming forth to do. Because many times people think, oh, channeling's bad and, and mm -hmm. you don't know what you're getting. And if you are um, having an experience where it's a trickster, let's say, or mm -hmm. a lower negative energy, they're definitely not going to tell you who they are. They're definitely not going to be talking about love and light. So there's some key signs right there that you didn't have to have your red flags up. You asked the right questions and mm -hmm. he came through with shining colors, of course, being full of the um, source energy and love and light. That's wonderful. Oh, absolutely. So excited. Okay. So Penny, is there anything you need to do to prep for Zorro to come through? Because I know everyone channels differently. How does it work for you? I feel like mine's very easy. Like we have a very natural connection, um, which I actually have things I wrote down. So if you ever see me looking down at some point, it's because I have lots of notes that I made before today <laughs> of things, you know, that either he was saying or questions I knew that, you know, that might have required more thought from okay. him or time for him to think about if he wanted to answer. And, okay, you know, one of the things is that for me, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm special I'm, if that from anybody. I'm an ordinary person. Um, but like light workers, we have sometimes have semi different abilities. Um, and for, uh, for me, I mean, a lot of his connection to me is telepathic. Like most of the time it's just an internal dialogue between the two of us. And I don't just hear him as this big separate voice, but sometimes like when I'm in deep meditation, he does sound like we're face to face, you know, like I really feel like he's in the room and he's a voice outside of my head. But like overall, if I'm not in deep meditation, it's just a constant like the running of his, his you know, his, like I'll ask a question, he'll answer it. Okay. You know, um, you know and for me, a part of the connection is too is he has told me like one of the reasons I was chosen was one of my abilities is I exist in more than one dimension, even like right now. But the part of me that is least evolved is here. This is my human form of my least evolved self that needs to work on, be worked on, I should say. Um, and I have two other selves that are much higher evolved, you know, wow. and at a much higher vibration, and they need the rest of me, basically, to reach that level. 
and quickly um, because, like I said, the earth is, the things are changing. The vibration is so low okay. that it's actually really bad for everybody in the earth to have this vibration so low. But he, he's told me that I basically have one foot here on earth and one foot in heaven. Oh. And he said all the light workers that are like me are being called to work immediately. And they're trying to raise our vibrations super quick. Okay. Um, my mind showed up so soon. Um, okay. Instead of like waiting until, you know, like I just kept feeling like I wasn't ready at first, you know, and he's like, oh no. And he's like a light worker with your ability to move dimensionally. Uh, he's like, you're ready. And karmically, you know, he's like, you're at a good spot. And that, means, that matters too. If you want to meet a master karmically, you have to be doing good things and, you know, and raise your vibration if you want a master to come. Because they're at a higher vibration um, than we are in general. I mean, they're kind of just like right below angels um, in that dimension. So, yeah, I mean, for me, it's just very natural. A lot of telepathic, you know, communication and a little bit outside, depending, you know, I mean, I meditate every day. So I guess I hear them every day outside of my head, too, like a person sitting next to me. But, yeah, it's just a constant little feed, you know, yeah. where it's really nice, where, you know, some psychics get images, you know, and even if I get an image, he's right there to explain it, which is really nice. That is so helpful because as a psychic medium myself, many times we'll get an image or we'll get a feeling or we'll get a knowing and then it's like this puzzle and we have to put all the pieces together and pull from the files that yeah. they must have given us that image because of something we've experienced so that we can explain it properly. Mm -hmm. So, wow, it's almost like you've got the whole manual right with you. Yeah. It's so awesome. <laughs> That's why I told him, I was like, that's one of the great things about being having a, you know, being a channel is oh. it takes out some of the doubt, like where you're just like, did I interpret that right? You yeah. know, and sure enough, he'll be like, well, sort of, but he's like, what you're missing is this. And I was like, oh, I would, I didn't know that, you yeah. know, because I mean, I still get feed from angels and my guy, my spirit team. Mm -hmm. And that comes in the normal way, like an image, you know, and, but if I don't understand it, sometimes he's, you know, before I even get a chance to ask them, like, huh, <laughs> you know, he'll be like, it's this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. It's like the big brother coaching you the whole way. I love it. <laughs> yep. Well, let's jump in. And you've already answered a couple of things that he has said, but let's ask Soro, will humanity shift into a higher consciousness in Penny and Mai's lifetime, this lifetime here in humanity? And sadly, I mean, he said, you'll see some of it, but not as, um, as much as we want. Um, and he said right now, I mean, one of the things I wrote down is he calls it the great darkness. He's like, there's a great darkness sweeping the world. Okay. And he's like, hate, you know, and low vibration has become such a way of life for some people, you know, and he's like, and the darkness feeds that. And he's like, and that's why, you know, like, I, I talked about this in prior, you know, like a couple of weeks ago, a huge shift happened and thousands of angels were sent to come to earth because the darkness is getting too much. It's out of control. And it's like throwing the vibration of the earth off. And he's like, we can't have that. You know, the earth wants to ascend. We can't have the darkness, you know, taking over like this. And so, you know, like I said, they've sent like so many angels to work. Um, to hear the race. He, does he have insight on because of this lifetime, not everyone going to be able to um, elevate to that? Uh, not everyone. Place. What we'll see a lot. Does he know, like, do, do we have to keep circling back and doing this again and again and again until the earth gets it? Do we ever get it? I'm kind of listening to his feed. Um, he said it's going to take a long time. And he's like, and it all really depends. He's like, the free will of man just plays such a huge part in all this. He's like, we know you have the ability. The earth and every human being, you have the ability to make this right. He's like, you came from the light. You are not of darkness. And he's like, and all of you have the ability to raise the vibration and your own. He's like, but the choice is going to be mankind. And he's like, for those of you that want to ascend, and he's like, they're going to work with us. All, all of them will ascend. And we're going to help. We're going to like, we're going to raise the vibration. Maybe not to where we want to see it in our lifetime. And we're, he's just hoping, you know, it's for him. And like, it's just, I just feel like it's still an unknown because of the free will, excuse me, right. <clears throat> of mankind to know whether or not for sure it's going to work. But he says in my lifetime, I will see, we'll see some of it, you know, okay. and we'll make a big dent in it, um, especially with all the lightworkers that have come um, and some of the Ascension Masters. 
Is this era, if you will, or I don't know if era is the right word, this, um, mm, not era, this time zone that we're in, this, uh, I guess, lifetime, for lack of a better word, like, mm -hmm. I feel like there's been an extra push, like there's a lot more of us ascending, mm -hmm. a lot more of us waking up. Is that the case, or does it just feel that way? Nope, it's happening. Um, again, that's why, like, um, I was actually really lucky to actually, I, I got to have live feed of the angels leaving heaven, and it was really amazing, because um, there was, like, choir, like, angel choir singing. Um, so, no, I mean, we will see a huge dent, a huge shift in it, you know, and he's like, and it requires all of us, especially the light workers who, have been, who are ascending to work hard you know, to reach people. And I mean, that's one of the biggest things that he messages he's going to have for the world is that he's gone. He's like, we are calling for all light workers to ascend. He's like, we need you, you know, and it's because they do, they want, if we need to turn that tide. And anyway, I think we will turn the tide in this lifetime. It's not as big as you and I would want to see it, but it's enough that I think it's going to turn the tide in our favor in our, in our lifetime. lifetime. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, that, that makes me happy. I mean, I do feel really encouraged by him uh -huh. with this. Um, but I still feel like just from him that it's kind of a, he shakes his head. I mean, it's not like a full on like, yay, we definitely will. It's just kind of like, there's so many factors that come into play. And he's like the free will, which is a beautiful gift that we should never take for granted. Um, will play a big part in that because even as, as a light worker, a light worker can deny being a light worker right. because out of fear, you know, if, if they're afraid they're going to be persecuted or mm -hmm. hurt or killed, some of them won't stand up, you know, to the light. And I mean, I mean, I understand that. I understand the fear of the ridicule. Um, but like, I'm just hoping that we can like really teach people and open up hearts. And if we can really get the love out there and the light that we need, they shouldn't ever be afraid. And right. hopefully that will help on I me mean, all the light workers ascend, which is what the world, I mean, the world desperately needs all the light workers to ascend. So speaking of light workers, many times us light workers, we're always looking for how do we get ourselves to a better place? And one of the things that comes up often is diet. Does he mm -hmm. have a suggestion for what kind of diet is going to elevate our soul awakening? I mean, I read things about it, but I would love his input. He's, I've actually asked him, but he's not as strict on it. He said it really depends on... There's another thing that I didn't really know as about know as much about until you know until I knew Zoro was we all belong on a spectrum of a ray, and it's different for each ray. Um, and I didn't know that. Um, and so he said for some people, you know, it's key like eating healthy. He said to eat of the living. So for him, you know, like anything that's fake, processed, no. He's like those things are they're horrible for your body. It will not help you ascend. And he's like, and a lot of the ascension is like just that, you know, your body is a tool, you know, and he's really broken it down for me where he's like, it's not even so much that the foods will help you ascend as it's, he's like, this is your temple. This is your tool that we've given you to achieve ascension. And he's like, how you treat it, you know, you need time. And he's like, if you treat your body badly and you put bad things into it, he's like, you're not going to get the time you need to work and meet some of the goals that you have here. And so he's like, so eating healthy, like it's for him. He just commonly just says, you know, eat of the living. And I was like, does that mean meats, fruits, vegetables? And he's like, yes, anything that is living. Um, but if it's chemical, he does not like chemicals, like anything of any sort. He's like, not only is it bad for psychic connection, mm -hmm. um, he's like, it's just poison, basically. He's like, you're poisoning a tool. And he's like, why would you poison the tool? And I was like, I, I understand that. So for him, it is. It's just he's not as strict. He said, depending on where you're at in the ray, the ray determines what your purpose is. Wherever your purpose is, will depend on your diet. Okay. So for me, it's not as a big, as much of a big deal since I'm already at a higher vibration. But people who are at a low vibration, it's a huge deal how you eat. Okay. Because he said already that it's probably not helping. Because like for me, um, over the last few years, I felt a nudging like mm -hmm. I was supposed to try to give up sugar. Not necessarily yep. like hundred percent. I could have some mm -hmm. here and there, but I needed to give that up. So I did. I was supposed to give up coffee. So I did. Um, I'm feeling a nudge where, you know, that once in a blue moon um, glass of wine, I feel like, hmm, I think I'm supposed to give that up. And it's funny because things start to not even taste good. And, you know, when you're doing it and you're getting these nudges. So, 
So that makes sense, like depending on our ray. So and your master, he said your master will because he said for him what he teaches is not as important in his area for what he teaches, oh. but your master and what you're trying to achieve and what your goal is that will matter. So I mean, there's you know, I'm going to come back to that again because you have another question you asked that I didn't realize it ties into that too, but in a different way. Where you at are at on the ray and who yeah. your master is will depend on a lot. That will determine a lot of things that you're feeling. Okay. Um, and what you need. Well, and because, you know, when we don't tap into source and we don't tap into our spirit team to find answers, for example, I've done tons of reading, tons of research about what Ray I am. Someone has tapped in for me as well. And so what I've been told is I am a blue Ray indigo, but am I, does Zorro know? Is that a yes? Yeah. He's called you an indigo for sure, and he's definitely a blue. And I didn't even know I was a blue. And he was like, <laughs> he's like, you're so blue. It's not blue, a good blue, blue. And, oh. so, and I was like, I didn't even know that. But I have other colors too that I didn't really necessarily think I would associate with on the ray. But then I'm also what he said. I am in essence a rainbow, um, which is another reason that I'm a channel. A lot of channels, like I am, will be a rainbow. We are basically we don't just identify with one. Ray, we are actually all of the rays, but only bits and pieces. So we make up all rays. And so he's like, You are actually the entire ray. And he's like, But not, he's like, but You identify strongly in blue, white, and green okay. in my rays. And so, but he said, But you actually have a foot in each ray. And I was like, Interesting. He's like, Which again is why I was chosen as a channel because I can, like, I can connect to anything, which means all the masters, all of the angels. And he's like, it's basically a divine connection thing for me and why channels and our rainbows work really well because awesome. we can easily make that connection to anybody and anything very quickly. Okay. And that makes so it's very interesting. Sense. Yeah, that is very interesting. Now I want to also move to um, crystals. You know, we're, we're told to uh, respect mother earth and connect mm -hmm. to mother earth and ground. And like, if we can't get outside to walk barefoot or ground in that mm -hmm. way, to bring the earth inside. Is there a best kind of crystal for connecting with spirit that we should be working with? I'm listening to him again. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of notes. Um, again, this is what I was just talking about, the ray. Where you're at on the ray will depend on your stones. Okay. Um, indigos have their own set of ascension stones. Um, and so in general, um, if anybody doesn't know where they at, where they're at on the ray, mm -hmm. um, he is saying that I am so terrible at pronouncing these things. The people just bear with me as I butcher <laughs> these stone names. Awesome. Um, but like quartz is huge um, for me. Where I fall on the ray and the fact that I'm a rainbow, it's really interesting. As soon as I started wearing moonstone, is when I met my master. Um, moonstone is a huge ascension stone for me and for indigos. Oh. Um, but amethyst and quartz, um, the one, this is a big one, as two lights. It's like oh. AZ, EZ, two light is a huge, that's for everybody, but okay. especially okay. indigo as well. Um, it's wow. actually, yeah. yeah, tanzanite, brookite, and moldavite are just some of the normal ones. But if you're an indigo, he said in particular, agalite, aquamarine is a big one for um, anybody who's an indigo should have aquamarine. Okay. Um, Labradorite, moonstone, selenite, amethyst, and anything that's related to garnet and ruby. Because there's some stones that are like byproducts where they're a bit of this and a bit of something else, but if they have garnet or ruby in them, for okay. indigos, those are huge. And I can send you those again personally later. That is awesome. Yeah, I want to uh, have those in writing. That would be awesome. And I have a lot of those already. And it's funny that I'm attracted to certain ones. I've got a moonstone. I've got the quartz. I've got the amethyst. Um, there's a couple of others you named off that I'm going blank. Agalite and aquamarine are ones that you're going to want to get if you don't have them. Okay. I don't have those. That's next on my list. Shopping. Here we go. Thank you, Zara. <laughs> Um, great to know. And I don't know. I don't think I sent you this one ahead of time. Yeah. Um, this again resonates with mother earth and plant medicines. So 
I don't know, Penny, if you've heard of a lot of plant medicines, but there's like ayahuasca, which is a combination of plants that's done in a lot in ceremonial settings with shaman. There's um, psilocybin, the mushrooms. There's peyote. There's probably even more that I don't even know. I think there's a DMT mm -hmm. and stuff like that too. What is the feel from Zorro, from Ascended Masters, the Divine? What is the feel around plant medicine for healing? us humans, some things are just flying by me, and or connecting to the divine? Essential. It's he said absolutely essential. Um, what else? He, sorry, I'm listening to some live feed right there. I have a huge connection. Well, I'm listening to him too, a huge connection to nature for that very reason. Um, because nature is life. And he, and he said it's the cure. He's like the cure for so many things that you think all these, like, again, chemicals and compounds are the cure for things, and he's like, and it's really not. And he's like, some, some of the most purest things, um, like turmeric, um, ginger, he's like, these things have incredible healing properties, um, almost better than some antibiotics that, are, that exist. So for Zorro, that's huge. That's so huge. Um, because of Zorro, that's something, another reason why I think I was chosen by him is my huge tie to the land. And knowing that the land is healing and how we treat the land is huge. And like, and he's saying that some of the, even the practices we're doing though is actually even changing some of the properties of things that were good for us. And that's really alarming too. This is again, something where the vibration of what we're doing, it matters. He's like, you're hurting things that we gave you as tools. Even those things can go away if you're not careful. And he's like, and that would be, you know, devastating to us, you know, because we need those things. They are essentially important to life, to healing and ascension. I mean, he totally, totally yeah, yeah. Was completely on board with like using those things over anything else. Um, so, and Penny, um, are you aware of the psychedelic um, stuff, properties that like I oh, some of them and the mushrooms and things have? So sometimes there's this, um, uh, the spiritual side, I always hear, yes, 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 this is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's to touch it's almost like to get a glimpse mm -hmm. of the other dimension, um, not only for healing, but it gives us a glimpse of that other dimension. So they're even more so than gardening and food and turmeric and, you know, all the goodness that nature is giving us this, the other practice of the plant medicines that give us those psychedelic um, connections. He's mm -hmm. in agreement with that. Yes, he says that some, for some people, it's the only way they can quiet the outside world. He said that basically he's like, society has created a barrier in most people's minds telling you you can't do this, you shouldn't do this. And like, it's because of this. Some people actually almost need this, you know, to reach the higher vibration. I mean, he's like, he's not a, he doesn't think I need things like that. Um, he's like, but some people do. And he does not look down. Okay. I don't feel that like he disapproves of that at all. He says, I don't need it. But some people do. Some people are not able to, like we know, we call it quieting the ego, mm -hmm. quieting the mind. Mm -hmm. Some of those are basically, basically they take that big block and they shut it down and they open up that window for a short amount of time. Um, and he says again, you, with all things, use sparingly. He says you shouldn't have to use a lot. And if you're using a lot, you're abusing it. Um, as in like, you shouldn't need much of it at all, you know, to achieve that state. So he said, I mean, people will know. He's like, I think he's, he's like, like, use within reason, you know. Yeah. Um, the people that I have talked to about it, usually you do it a, a couple of times. It breaks those barriers. It heals yep. that stuff that needs healed that you just couldn't reach. And then all of a sudden you've got the aha and it changes your life and you're off in a beautiful direction. And of course, somebody knocks on the door. It's probably our internet. <laughs> Let me just pause here. I'm going to mute. All right, we had to take a break there, but we're back. Now, speaking of plant medicines, Penny, Zorro was also informing you about protection, which I think probably also relates to how light workers mm -hmm. also need to protect from lower entity attacks or anything else. Can you share what he has to say on that? Yes, like when we were taking the pause, you know, he keeps talking. <laughs> he doesn't get the pause button. Awesome. Um, he was just saying, you know, that 
you know, the, one of the things that he wanted to stress the importance of was that if you do use a altering drug, you know, to reach, to knock that barrier down is that you also have to protect because when you knock that barrier down, it's not just love and light that knows that that barrier is down. And yes, I mean, I'm just going to refer to it as he usually calls them unclean or darkness and you can call it what you want. Just like I would say, if you want to call God, God, or the source of the light, um, you know, he just says that, you know, you got to be really careful. He said, when those barriers are down, you know, you still need to make sure that you use a white light um, from the source. For, for me, I mean, God is God to me. Call him what you want. He's God to me. Um, I like to give things names. And, you know, he's like, use that white light. Make sure that you're protected. He's like, make sure that when you're in a different state, you know, that you make sure that you're still talking to somebody that's from the divine and not something else. Um, and you can tell. He said, you know, the way they make you feel, you might feel nauseous or headache or cold and just kind of despairing. He's like, you can usually tell when something else has slipped in that doesn't belong. Um, but it's white light. You know, I mean, always, look, you know, and just for light workers too, you know, the more that you work with white light, um, like as I've ascended, um, I've noticed that other, I'm noticed by other things. Um, not really going to get into that stuff, but it's just my light can be seen by the good and the bad is the way I'm going to put it. And so now I exercise more caution and I just use white light at all times. Um, I smudge my house, uh, which is like when you burn sage, open your doors. And I have like, you know, things that I say that are really encouraging and happy. And I just let, you know, anything know that if you're not of love and light, you don't belong here. There's no place for you in my life and communicating with me if you are not of love and light. And, you know, Zorro really is a big part of that. Um, he's a good warning system for me that if something is off or closing in on me, he's really quick to be like, what? All right. What? Yep. He lets, sets off a little red light for me, basically. And right away, I'm just, I'm really careful to keep myself protected. And light workers need to do that. You need to do that a lot. It's like something every day. Okay. And it won't hurt yeah. you. I mean, even if you're not meditating or using an altering substance of some sort, you know, he's like, it's just, just smart at all times to exercise, you know, white light. Yeah. Keep, you know, attract only the good to yourself. You don't want the other. Love it. Thank you. That's great advice. And I know that Penny and I want to ask some a little bit more personal questions, but on an end note for the world, with whoever's going to be made to see this video, is Zorro, does Zorro have any kind of a message that he wants the world to know right now? And I wrote that down just because I wanted him to really think about it. Um, and he always adds to it, but you know, what I wrote down even just yesterday was he said, when he was talking to me, he said, cherished ones, break free from the shackles on your soul. And he said, like, that's how he sees the earth is like, the souls have shackles. He's like, break free of those shackles on your soul. The great darkness sweeping the, um, the world has, ha is holding many of you down. It's keeping your vibration low and your skepticisms high. He's like, these are not things that are of the light. You come from the light. You are not of darkness. Um, he said, awaken now and help the world ascend with love, compassion, and dignity. Love is the cure for what is ailing the world. I need you, all the light workers, I need you to be love. Let love rise, not hate. Um, so yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things that he was saying, again, is that love is going to be a key thing that, for Zorro. Because he said love is the only thing that is going to help us ascend. And if you, you know, your whole point of being here is Earth is school. I mean, you come here because the lower, the lower vibration and your karma, it came here to be like, your whole point is you want to get closer to the light. You can't get closer to the light if you are skeptic, your vibration is low, if you're doing bad things. Only things like, when I say good karma, you know, Zoro really every day pushes me to do something randomly nice for a stranger. He is always, like, when we're out and about, he is always noticing anything good happening. And he's like, did you see that person? He paid, the, she didn't have enough money for her groceries. Did you see how he covered it? It, it didn't matter to him. And he's like, that was a good thing. He's like, and he didn't ask. He didn't give his name or wanted any thanks for it. And he, anytime he sees any wow. random acts of kindness, holding doors for people, um, helping somebody up that's fallen. I mean, he, if I don't see it myself right away, I feel the stirring and I look. And he makes sure that every day, every day that I see something and do something, um, and he said that's really key to people who want to meet or work with a master is that every day, you know, your whole world, how you think matters. Um, I have a high kinetic energy. And so I've always been warned that how I think is very important mm -hmm. in every aspect, you know, that, you know, my thoughts become actions. 
And so he's like, you must keep your thoughts good at all times. And that's one of the things that's really funny. That I would say one of the greatest things about having a channel to Zorro is I have a constant feed of like, no, nope. you know, and no, <laughs> you know, he'll be like, how can we've done this? He does. We, how, how can we do this different? You know? Um, and like, usually like I said, he's not really big on the food with me, but like at the same time, he's like, you need to eat healthier. You know, he's like, this tool ain't going to last. If you're, you know, put that donut down. He's like, that's not going to help. That <laughs> bought that tool lasts longer. You know, so I mean, he's never mean. I mean, he doesn't bully me. I mean, it seems like it's not like maybe he's bullying me to be better, but he's not. It's more just these gentle nudges of be love. Love what you put into your body. Love needs to come out of your body. You know, and he's like, think about how you treat people. And he's like, if you want to get closer to the light, to God, he's like, you have to be of the light and do what serves the light. And he's like, and light workers, we serve light. We don't serve darkness. And that's one thing he wants the world to know too, is that, you know, again, and I keep saying it, you are from the light and you serve the light. It's like, he's like, you need to stop serving yourselves. And that's another thing he said is to shed everything that you're doing for yourself. You know, if you only think about yourself every day, he's like, that will bring you closer to the light. If all you care about is money, fame, fortune, um, attention. He's like, these are not things that are going to bring you closer to God. If anything, you're going to get sent back to another life cycle. It's like, cause you're not getting it. And he's like, people who are raising in vibration and karma and karma, they're shedding those things. It doesn't mean you need to be a poor man on the street, shed everything like that, your homes. It's not about that. He's like, but within reason, he's like, shed things that don't serve the light. It's a it's huge, huge message for him. That's beautiful. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. I think in closing, I would like to ask, um, let me see if there's one or two, uh, maybe one, maybe two, if Zorro's willing to share, was Penny chosen to do this channeling with Zorro before she ever came here? Was her soul in contact with you before she came here? He says yes. Um, I worked with many masters and he said that I basically have chosen most of my masters already um, based on what my needs are here and what my sole purpose will be. Um, okay. I've had him for the last few years, but he said that, yes, I had chosen him. He, I don't feel that he, he says he wasn't here before, but he's here now. He said that in my past lives, I hadn't reached the vibration of meeting him. Masters are at different levels, even dimensionally. Um, and I think he's around a six or a seven. Um, and sometimes I've been cruising around the fifth or lower. And so he said, until I reached the right vibration, I would not have met him. Okay. Um, so I would have worked with different masters. Um, and he said, I remember you had a question too. It was like, well, I always channel for him. Yes, and he said, yes. this lifetime, he will always be a channel for me, but I will also channel other masters. So he said, at some point, I won't just hear him. I will hear others. And I'm just like, oh boy, it's going to get crowded in there. Bring the party. <laughs> that's awesome and and before we end for the public um was there anything else that i had sent you ahead of time penny that you do want to answer for the public um let me think um for the public yeah i think his yeah, i think we've covered most of those i mean like i said for him the biggest thing is, you know, the light workers that are here, if you even have the inkling of a feeling or you want to help, you know, he's like, some people don't realize they're light workers and we're like, well, I could do that. And he's like, yes, you can. Um, he's like, basically we all are in a way, you know, he's like, but what we bring to the table is different, which is why you'll find that some people have different abilities um, and how people channel will be different. I mean, just because I can have a life feed doesn't mean that somebody else channels that they will. Sometimes it might be, they might have just telepathic, um, and he said, I mean, that's okay. He, you know, it's like, how are we, everybody's gifts are different, but that's how it serves the light. Everybody has to be different to serve the light. You know, we, otherwise we'll be doing the same thing. And our purposes are all very, some are similar and some are very different. Um, so like I said, like when you're asking about the land, you know, some light workers are supposed to heal the land because even the land itself is suffering. It's not even just that the world has such darkness and hate sweeping it. You know, mine's going to be more about helping stop the hatred you know, on a large scale. And then there's some people who are going to work on healing the land. Um, if some people are going to work with like world leaders to try to get them to be better. Cause like the darkness is really affecting a lot of leaders and their words, their actions. And so I know a lot of light workers are even going to start like aiming at that area 
because, I mean, they have such influence over, like, what we do and what happens in the world. So, I mean, I think you're going to see a lot. I mean, a lot of the angels that came, you know, are going to work with the leaders of the world and with other light workers so that we can all try to work together. Because that's, again, a huge thing for him is if we don't work together, we can't raise the vibration. You know, I can't do it alone. You know, nobody can do it alone. It takes a bunch of us working together and love. Love and light is the only way to raise the vibration here. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing with the world, Zoro, and it, working through Penny and Penny Your Time. Um, again, I'm Stacy Overman, spiritual guide, co-creator in Positive Change, and Penny, just thank you. Thank you for sharing with the world. Yeah. We're going to take a pause, and um, we will see you in our next video. <laughs> And this is the part of the video that is just for Penny and I. <laughs> All right. So talking with Zorro, Penny is channeling Zorro. Um, any of the messages that you want to go ahead and answer with Zorro first? And that way you may, he may be saying something before we even get into it. Um, yeah. I mean, he's, well, first of all, I mean, he's just really excited about the spiritual center which again is like, I mean, he specifically brought souls into your life already um, that are going to help. I mean, you've already known that the people that you're working with now will definitely be helpers. Um, and that's not by chance. Um, and that's why he, you know, again, he told me about a master that he thinks that you should request in particular, if you haven't already, is, you know, the Lu Sing. Um, which is funny is because he's a master um, that can help with all, like just even building your center, but like to the archangels, which surprisingly, um, he said that Gabriel and Shamuel are going to be huge in helping you. Oh. Um, Gabriel will get the message out. Okay. Um, but he said Shamuel, which is when you already said that people are contacting you, they said that Shamuel is going to bring in people, he said, that, or start contacting you just out of the blue. Like you're going to like, start meeting people. People are going to start coming to you that you don't even know where it's coming from. And he said Shamuel will help with that and make sure that you get this constant like influx of the right people and like people that want to be in the center or take services from the center. Shamuel will help with that a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and then of course, and then another one that I don't know that you knew this, you asked like who's working closely with you. Yeah. And so he's yeah. saying that Gabriel and Shamuel will definitely soon be working very closely with you. Um, but Jophiel. I think it's pronounced Jophiel. Mm -hmm. Jophiel is like an interesting one. Um, and I was like, well, how's, after you kind of explained to me who he was, I was like, oh, the, the feelings that you have to start doing art again, that's all Jophiel's influence right now. Um, Jophiel is like all about art and beauty. And they said that he could be a huge thing, like what you're feeling right now, this drive to like, I want to start painting and drawing, but you don't have room for all your supplies. I know he understands but also decorating and like the way that you'll set up your center, you know, you use Jophiel and how you want it done. Cause then oh, it'll be okay. confusing to you and the divine. Yes. Um, so Jophiel might be one that you didn't know is already with you. Um, I feel like Jophiel did you know Jophiel? when I was painting for sure. Yep. Yeah. Jophiel said he's a big part of why you had those feelings to paint um, and why they're back again. And so he can be a huge part in helping with the design of the center. That's awesome. Which is really nice. And of course, he said, uh, here, Sherry knows about the mother um, and Metrodon. Um, and I was like, yep, I think Sherry knows that those people were closer with her. But he was most excited that Shamuel and Gabriel and then, uh, you know, the master. And I think that he's implying either Lucing might be working with you already or is about to. So it's kind of like basically telling you to get that master coming. Okay. Coming yes. to you. And I'll start researching that too. So I kind of have more of an understanding who he is. Mm -hmm. That'll be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the angel. Oh, go ahead. So <laughs> did you say or did Zorro say that I already know about the mother, Mother Mary? He did. He did. He did. He said he calls her the mother. And I asked him, I had a, just a quick internal dialogue. It's like, does that mean Mary? Because I think I think you called her Mary. And so yeah. he's like, the mother, yes. And I was like, okay. okay. They call her the mother on the other side just for short because again it's this name thing like you know it's like we're so attached to like distinct names you yes. know that I'm, I'm lucky that he's willing to give names but he doesn't already always I should say I mean I've already asked him what my other master's names will be and he's like nope not ready not telling you yet and I was like oh. <laughs> okay. but apparently it's not important yet wow um just trying to look back here um is there, let's see, where is that? I can't remember. I had a question on here somewhere. Anyway, 
is there something more I can do physically, energetically, spiritually that can attract more students to come and enroll so I can help more people enlighten quicker? He, that's where he's saying use Shammy well and ask Shammy well that same question okay. and Gabriel um, because they for some I didn't know they would be involved in these things actually I was like really I was like I know of those angels um, I was like I didn't realize they would help with that stuff and he's like yeah I mean kind of like Patty how'd you not know <laughs> but um, okay. yeah it's, it's, it's funny he doesn't say duh but sometimes I feel it <laughs> <laughs> right they probably didn't have yeah. that word back then okay so then I'm gonna he's saying the it. same thing it's um you've already started. He's like the websites that you have. He's like, you've already seen they're growing every single day. He's like, does she see that every day she's adding people? And I'm like, well, of course. Yeah. You know, he's like, that is, that's a huge sign. He's like, you've got to keep putting yourself out there. And he said, again, the more you raise your vibration and your karma, and he's like, that will attract again, the right angels, the right masters. And then they, they have their own connections, you know, because like they don't just work with one person usually. Um, which is another thing, actually, on a side note. Um, like, I heard Aubrey say something the other day, and I meant to correct her, you know, that, you know, the 42 Ascension Masters that are around, she's like, they're not actually on Earth. Um, I think she thinks, thinks they're walking in human. Oh, okay. And she's like, they are not. And so I asked him, he's like, well, can they? And he's like, well, he's like, to work with five, seven billion people, he's like, it's better for them to be in heaven, mm -hmm. where we have mm -hmm. the ability to reach them on a wide scale. He's like, if they were here in skin, we wouldn't have the same effect. You know, we'd be able to reach as many people. Um, okay. But angels do walk, he said, on, on earth at times. You know, I mean, part of it is, you know, to test man, you know, to see where we're at. I say man, but they mean creation, mankind. Mm -hmm. sometimes they, there are little tests that sometimes the light does to see, like, are they, do they understand the importance of the good, doing good, good karma, loving each other? Like, it's like God almost wants his own evidence, you know, that his children, his light workers are loving each other and doing like we're supposed to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not that he's holding a grudge if we're not. It's just kind of like little things where he wants to see it okay. and have it reported back to him. Okay. Um, okay. So there are some angels on earth that are watching, obviously. I mean, I, that's not a big shock to me at all. So that brings um, up question I didn't put down, <laughs> and maybe he'll share. Um, in the book of Enoch, it talks okay. about um, – the angels many mm -hmm. many years ago that did come to earth and yes. did have children with humans um i would imagine that some of us that are walking this earth have that angelic dna does that happen to be Possible. penny or i i'm listening <laughs> Still listening to him, he's like, I do not um, have angelic DNA that he knows of. Um, he said that some people very well may. He's not aware of it, um, like on his own. Yeah. But he said it is very possible to be very ancient. He said that it sounds like this, this didn't happen it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So actually, I thought it would be true that we all maybe actually a lot of us do. Then um, would be ancient DNA. Yeah. He said that he will yeah. ask about um, Okay. Thank you. He, said that he sits on councils as is, which is really interesting. There's actually even councils on the other side. Yeah. Um, like he does life yeah. reviews sometimes with people. Um, and so that's kind of stuff that will come up in there too. You know, and it's like he said, he's never really thought about it. Yeah. And then nobody's ever really asked him that. That's really interesting. That's so cool. Those are kind of the things that go around in my mind. <laughs> um, is what more could I be um, – through Spirit's help, teaching my beautiful students in my program. Is there anything I'm missing or anything um, I can add? I don't think so. He said, um, what did he write? Um, that's where when he was talking about shedding, he was like, um, we do a lot with like shedding, you know, personal pain and stuff that we're teaching. Um, but he said another part needs to be to shed what doesn't serve the light. He's like, we teach a lot that what doesn't serve us. And he's like, but just what's also just as important is what doesn't serve the light, which is what I was saying when he was like, again, the way we treat each other, um, talk to each other, monetary gains. I mean, there's just so many things that are not of the light. And he's like, it doesn't serve the light. I mean, he's like, in order, 
he's like, I assume that somebody enrolls in a class like this that they want to ascend and be a light worker. And he's like, that's actually even more important, you know, for a light worker to be, you know, is to know that they're who they serve. You know, you serve the light. And I mean, yeah, so if anything, he's like, you're doing things fine. Just make sure that they realize mm-hmm. that the, serving the light is one of the most important things first. Yes. Um, and to yes. shed anything that is not of the light. Serving the light. Okay. I love it. Yeah, that verbiage is beautiful. Okay. And I dreamt about the word angel kisses, and I thought it was to do with a book title. But since then, I had incorporated it in many different places because I felt the angels were working mm-hmm. through me, and it was as if I was kissing like the channel for angels, but is there something bigger picture that I was supposed to be using that term for, or is there a different meaning? I've heard for him, I, one of the things that he told me right away, and then he's chiming in again, is that he's like, what the word actually means, he's like, the definition is actually more important than the action. Um, he's like, the actions will become important. He's like, but the definition is more important that he says that for you, he's like, this to Stacy, this is the highest form of love and connection that she can imagine. And I was like, oh, so that's how they kind of came up with the term is that for you, an angel kiss would be the highest form of love and connection to the light. Um, and so he said, does she not have a center she is opening? I'm listening to, and he's like, he's like, does she not, would her center not be of light, love and connection? And he's like, I think it should be a part of the sort of the center, the spiritual center. He's like, it could be a name in it. Or he's like, if you want in the name, he said, I could see her teaching a class entitled that, doing a book, um, a web page that's entirely about angels. You know, that's devoted to people who have had, what you know, interactions with angels, just like you have near-death experiences. He could totally see you reaching out and again, getting a whole new group of people who are just very interested in angels, which could open doors, even more doors than the near-death experience people are people who want angelic experiences or have had angelic, you know, experiences. Okay. Because where it's funny, where I have not had a near death, which I kind of have, but haven't, I have had angelic experiences. Yeah. You know, yeah. like when I first met Gabriel. And that's why Gabriel is a huge part of my life. That's the direction I was when I met my mentor. Mm-hmm. And my mentor really helped me fine tune so I could really market to get people mm-hmm. that I could help. So all that branding crap that we have to do down mm-hmm. here. So that's why Angel Kisses kind of went off to the side and my super focus of angels went off to the side. So, um, but it's still a big part of me. And so I will be pulling that back in for the spiritual center for sure. Yeah. I mean, I really feel like, you know, like he's saying like the center will use the name in some way or form, whether it's a course or a name of like a dormitory of some sort where something will be taught that's only about angels. Um, Okay. angelic okay. experiences but like I said I totally I mean he definitely has said you know like there's so many avenues that this can take you know and he's like but the, again the definition to him is way more important than the action um and he's like but that will help you use it he's like knowing that that actually means the highest love and connection he's like with that she should know how to use it um and I was like well that's really I, I found that really sweet actually you know I was just like oh yeah. Because I mean, that's yeah. true. I mean, what could be, I could, anybody who's had an angelic experience, it's a joy that there are no words to describe. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so a kiss from an angel would just be like, whoa. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just there's yeah. no words that would describe something like that. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. I was just looking over the questions. I think we answered many of them that was mm-hmm. about you. Um, Penny's going to be able to check. Is there anything more that Penny can do to be able to channel your messages better? That's what he was telling me is that that's when he actually talks to me about (laughs) what I eat. Um, it's just because for me, you know, it's how I treat my body will matter. You know, if I put chemicals in that block him, that's a problem. So for me, you know, he does want for me to do better with that kind of thing. And Again, for me, the, hard, the best thing I can do is, because he's on a higher vibration than some, even some other masters, is that I have to keep my vibration very high. Karmically, I need to, like, stay on task. Um, and he does. He, he really wants me to get out there. And at some point, you know, and he doesn't put a time frame on it, but he's, like, at some point, he's, like, you'll be comfortable to do this yourself, as in, like, to broadcast yeah. and let yeah. people know. And he's already trying to prepare me for, like, the, what it's going to be like, you know, 
because he knows how I feel about ridicule and yeah. how nervous yeah. that makes me, you know, and that so many people don't even know what I do or the abilities that I have yet even. And he knows I, I still hang on to a lot of fear there. And then he was always like, fear, can't yeah. have it. You know, he's like, that doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve the light to be afraid. And I was like, I know. But that's why, so, I mean, that's I why he starts I teaching. I stopped using your last name because I know mm-hmm. that yep. I'm concerned for you. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to tag you online yeah. until you're ready. Like, I don't want that. Yep. I felt bad that first time. I was like, oh my goodness. Whoa. I should have uh, talked to you. And I didn't even think about it. And my that's all right. insensitivity, I feel bad about that. But so, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. And I'll get there. I mean, it's just it's like, it's just something I wrestle with. And, you know, that's one thing he's, one of the things he's teaching, you know, I mean, that's why I have a teacher, mm-hmm. you know, is that, you know, it's, you know, he's trying to help me like go of all those things, you know, like, cause like we always say faith and fear cannot share the same space. Yeah. yeah. There's never been truer words. Faith and fear cannot share the same space. Um, and I noticed that, you know, when I let go is when I had the best connection with him, you know, like I could, if I had been afraid of him when he came through, he would have, he would have gone back away. He would have felt like I wasn't ready you know, and all I can think is that being in this course, like, helped me be more accepting of him, you know, being like, okay, that's not weird, that's normal, you know, like, that's okay, you know, and it's because of that, you know, that he was able to come through so well, and I think he's been waiting, I mean, eight to ten years, you know, he's just like, to them, again, time doesn't matter, Yeah, it's not as important to them, but knowing that my body, my tool has a time frame for how well it's going to work, right. you know, he was very, almost, you know, getting to the point where he's like, I've given you so many signs, <laughs> uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. accept me, let me in, you know, and finally I did, you know, and it's one of the best things ever. I mean, he's brought so much more calm and understanding, you know, like I, I keep telling people all the time. I mean, I see the world completely differently. Uh-huh. You know, I see way more good. The, the bad actually makes me more sad in a way because I know what it's doing. You know, it's not just that it's something bad happening in the world. I now realize that that sends out energy. Mm-hmm. you know, in a way that we don't need it. And I was just like, oh, so now, yeah. So, so I guess if anything, that again, the message for us would be just that we need to post happier things even. Mm-hmm. Even Facebook mm-hmm. is an avenue for raising the vibration. It is. You know, yeah. like what we post. Yeah. To not even focus and not put energy on the bad things that are happening. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. cause if we look at chaos in the world and we talk about it and we go watching it, it, it mm-hmm. feeds to that energy. And yep. so, yeah, that's one reason why I don't like to watch the news. I'm like, I don't. I don't watch the news. I, I really don't. Yeah. I don't post about politics, anything. I just, I really, the vibration is not good. And it's not good for the world. It's just not. And so, I mean, yeah, those are a lot of things I've cut, you know, cords on, you know, where I'm just like, no, I may have to see it. But that doesn't mean I can, I'm going to send that energy back out, you know. Right. Well, unfortunately, time is just flown and I want to say thank you Penny and thank you Zorro I'm so grateful for all of your messages and I hope that we'll be able to do this again sometime soon of course and I'm sure you know as time goes on you know the message will probably be similar I mean his yeah. message will always be similar you know that how we have to ascend but questions he I mean if you have more questions I know that he's going to be here and he'll answer anything <laughs> Love it. If he can. And now he's already been saying quickly that there is angelic DNA in many people. So apparently he's already asked, <laughs> you yeah. know. Um, it is very true. He said there's a distinct possibility that you and I both, I was thinking at first he said no about me, but mm-hmm. he said in asking because it is so ancient, he's like, it makes sense. And he's like, and for me especially, where he said that I seem to be, have one foot in each dimension. Mm-hmm. He says probably because I probably do have angelic DNA. Yeah, that makes that connection with the rainbows in particular people who have that rainbow ray instead of one or two rays That's awesome. he's like a lot of us may actually I mean the indigos no blues sorry blues um, probably have angelic DNA okay very good to know so that's interesting didn't know about that either <laughs> see we're like a little tiny tidbit of DNA of walking angels <laughs> yeah and apparently that can depend where you put you on the ray as well Right. Didn't know about that either because he said, yeah, because like, uh, you know, like when I said I was blue and like so blue, you know, and he was just saying again, like they've noticed that that's definitely something that's very connected. And that's what most channels are very connected to the angelic. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. I'm going to push the button here.